Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Hack That Funnel Radio. This is a very special interview that you and I are both lucky to even have. So I've done this interview twice now, and that's not something that's normally a positive thing to do, but there were some issues beforehand, and I'm just lucky that this person was kind enough to say, yes, let's do it again. I loved being on talking with you. Let's just do it again. It's not a problem. And she's one of those people that you like being around, you just enjoy listening to, and you get sucked in. I cannot wait to share who she is, what she's done, and what I've realized. But I wanna tell you something, there is something very unique about this person individually. It's not very often that you look at somebody online and you say, that's where I wanna be in three to five years. That's where I wanna be in one to two years. That is where I'm going. It's not very often that you are walking in the trajectory and you look over and say, Holy cow, somebody's already walked that exact same road. That was the experience that I had on this episode and speaking with this person and she is amazing and she's making such a huge impact. I don't even think she knows how much of an impact she's already made, let alone how much she's going to make as she keeps pushing forward. If anybody knows her, you all love to scream her name. Her name is Katherine Jones, and she is a funnel genius. But not only that, she's learned how to make sales funnels work with just six simple steps that you can apply into any single page on your funnel to make it convert. Design tips that make this engine hum. There were so many trials. There were such learning experiences. There was constantly trying and over and over and over to figure this out. And when she figured it out, people started to ask her and then she turned it into her own program. Now I'll let her talk to you all about that and everything. But this, my friends, is Katherine Jones. Listen intently, lean in. This was one of the coolest podcasts that I've done so far and you're going to absolutely love it. Now, all of these are podcasts as well. You can actually go and listen to it on iTunes. You can listen to it on Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all of the above, iHeartRadio, Spotify, it's all there. But if you wanted to watch this on YouTube, which is where you are if you're listening to me right now, what I want you to do is like this video. Let me know that you like this content and you want more of it. And then subscribe. Make sure you to let me know that this is something that you want to be a part of. Let's roll a quick intro and hop on in to this amazing interview with Katherine Jones. I have spent the last five years building hundreds of marketing funnels and systems for over 100 clients, and I can tell you, most of you are skipping the most important part of the funnel build. There is a secret step-by-step -step blueprint that makes every sales funnel profitable. What is it? That is the question, and this podcast is the answer. My name is Ben Moot, and this is Hack That Funnel Radio. Everybody, Catherine Jones is on today. Thank you so much for being on again, Catherine. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I, I'm so excited to be here. Honestly, like, uh, yeah, I, cry. I think um, if you guys don't know, we, ha we had some technical difficulties last time. Yes. And when they ended up happening, we had to reschedule. I was like, you know, there are a lot of people that I would not reschedule with. It's just like, I don't want to spend time with you again. But I think you're amazing. So I Aww. was thrilled. I was like, oh, for sure. For sure. We'll oh, make it happen. You. Well, we officially met at Funnel Hacking Live. Or, no, sorry, no, no, no. Offermind. Offermind, yes. Offermind. Too many events. Uh, we met at Offermind. And then um, and then I'd heard about you because you had launched your product recently with a JV of a good friend of mine who was actually on the podcast as well. Mm -hmm. So super stoked that you're on. Thank you for coming back. Like, who was it? Who was friends? it? Spencer. Oh, I love Spencer Mika. That was Spencer. I love Spencer. Last time we talked, we literally, I didn't press the record button. So for those of you who are kind of lost on the whole thing, like what happened, I didn't press the record button and it just, we lost like 40 minutes of footage. So how did you get started in this funnel thing and then went on to create CF Design School or Academy? Nailed it. Yeah. CF Design School. Yes. Um, and again, such a good question. I think I said this last time too. I love this question. I ask this question all the time to people as well. Like, how did you get into funnels specifically? Because I feel like I, I it's like, how did you get into the internet, mar internet marketing? That's a story in itself. And then you get into funnels. And it's like, it's just, again, it's never an easy thing. It's never like, oh, I clicked on a Facebook ad. It's like, it's always insane. So um, my story began 20... Um, when did it begin? 2014. And I was in school. I was studying film. I decided I did not want to be studying film. And the millennial in me was just like, 
I'm, I'm going to change the world. Like I want to, I want to help people. And I had no idea what that meant or what I just felt something inside of me. And so the, the only way that I knew how to start helping people was to not be poor. I was like, if I can figure out how to generate money, then this will help me. So, um, and again, all these like ambiguous, I have no idea. Like, I'm just like this millennial, you know, like ah, save the world. So I start reading all these um, personal finance books and investment books. And those kind of get me integrated into their email marketing um, systems, which I didn't know at the time. Like I started getting emails from these people. I'm like, how are they getting my email? I look back, I'm like, I'm an idiot. I'm sure I put it in at some point, you know what I mean? Or they're targeting me or something. And um, anyway, so I start reading their emails and they start selling me on like online courses about copywriting and um, like competitive analysis and building a website and course and passive income and affiliate and affiliate sales. And, and I had never heard of these concepts before. And for whatever reason, they just like took a hold of my soul. I, and I didn't exactly understand why, or even what I was studying. I was just like, I want to learn this stuff. And so I'm like applying for credit cards that I should not be applying for paying for things on payment plans. I just should not because I'm in school still. Right. And, um, I'm actually working from, so it was the summer. So I actually took the semester off. So when I like discovered the internet and so I was working from like 7am to 2pm and then literally from like 2pm to 2am, I'm just like, you know, online, just like trying to learn. And it was just amazing. And I finally took this course that was on, um, essentially like how to run an online business. And it was the first time that I understand how you could collapse sales into a short amount of time, kind of this concept of automating sales and evergreen stuff. And it just like, it just like blew my mind. And I think that not only did I have this like millennial take over the world, but also at the time, like what I perceived to be competing was this, like, I really want to be like a present wife and mother one day. Like I really want to do that. I grew up with eight kids in my family. I love my family life. And, and at that time I didn't quite understand how career and motherhood could coexist. And so when I discovered this, this concept of online business, all of a sudden I was like, Oh my gosh, like if I'm not an idiot about this, like if I'm smart about this, then I, I could do this. Like, I think that I could have significant impact inside of my home and significant impact outside of my home. And that just like fueled the fire even more. And I became obsessed. So I literally made a conscious decision to not make school a priority because I was, what I wanted to do was not there. So by the time I graduated school, I was taking like, like, and by like taking, like, I think people buy online courses and then they just like, you know, sit and rot. Like I was doing the courses. I was taking like three times as many courses outside of school as I was inside. And I was just like, get me out here. I'm going to go. Anyway, so doing all these things, working for a tech startup while kind of doing my own thing on the side, doing some marketing consulting. I ended up launching a best-selling book, which was awesome. And, um, and doing okay, but my, my results in terms of my marketing consulting was just really inconsistent. I think we talked about this previously, like I would kill it sometimes. Like I would get like these amazing results sometimes for clients and for myself. And then like literally like the next week I would bomb it. And I'm like, what is my deal? Like, am I, am I smart? I'm like, I don't even know. Like, is this just a fluke? And so I was like desperate for consistency and desperate to understand like the correlations and causations between what was happening and the results I was getting. And so again, I'm just like really voraciously learning. I'm on randomly on a public speaking webinar because I was just like consuming everything I could. And somebody mentions the software click funnels and I was online like all the time, all the time. So I was like so confused that I had never heard of this before. I was a lead pages junkie. If you guys know what that is, it's like another landing page building software. So I heard ClickFunnels, I check it out, like the two week trials, like, mm, okay, like cool software. But then I read Russell Brunson's dot-com secrets and like my soul exploded. And, and I, yeah, see you understand, like you understand, like he, here's your thumbnail right here. You and me just holding these close to our hearts, but I am not kidding you. Like I, this book changed my life because it gave me a framework by which I could organize everything I had been learning. I think um, there's there's a lot of different people that sell online that are like, oh, if you want to get this result, do this or this or this or this. And there's so many people competing for what it is that they're trying to get you to do. And when I read Dotcom Secrets, God bless you, Russell Brunson, like he gave me a framework to understand like, oh, like this component fits here and this component fits here and here it is over here. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, like 
I understand how to get consistent results now. Like I understand like the, the, the theory of how that works. And um, it was amazing. So I like literally like my startup I was working for, cause I was still doing my company on the side and working for stuff. I like went into work the next day. I was like, guys, we're jumping ship. I learned about these things called funnels. Like we're going all in and God bless them. They like trusted me. It was amazing. And so um, we did that. I ended up doing the certified partner program with click funnels, which was amazing. And um, I just, all my clients, I just started doing that. And I honestly just started running my agency like crazy and it, and it grew a ton, but I was still honestly plagued with, um, lack of consistency in my results. And I would say before they were like, "Ah," and then, you know, it it leveled out a little bit, but it still wasn't to the degree where I wanted it to be. And I was super frustrated. And I just, I was like, what is the deal? And one thing that I started to notice, um, just because of how I felt and things that my clients would say is, I mean, I went through the certified partner program, which I don't have anything bad to say about it other than the fact that it was incomplete. Um, everything that they taught, everything that they presented was gold. I just like needed a little bit more in terms of the fact that it gave us like incredible strategy. Like we knew how to do it, but transferring that from our head to our fingers to know how to actually design these funnel pages in a way that not only looked extraordinary, but converted, like I didn't know how to do that. And so like this deep pain point came for me, honestly, from like a really personal standpoint, like I was embarrassed of what I was producing. And like, I didn't feel like I was like, I can't ask somebody to pay me 10 grand for this. Like it looks scammy, you know? And not only that, like I wasn't getting the results that I knew that I wanted. And so again, really like instinctively, I felt like I knew design was an issue and that, and if I was going to play the game, like I didn't want to play like the sell 250, $500 funnel game. Like I wanted to be an agency and play the 10 to 25 K game. And I knew that if I wanted that to happen, not only did I need stellar results, but I needed my stuff to look really professional as well. Because if people have 25 K to spend, like they're playing the game, they don't want, they don't want stuff that looks stupid. So, um, I started to do, just try and figure out like how to design these funnel pages in a way that looked extraordinary. And, and that converted. And the answers just kept coming back to like, learn the Adobe suite, like learn Photoshop illustrator, learn how to code, go back to graphic design school. And all three of those options sounded like absolute death to me. I was like, I do not have time to do this. Like I don't have time to do this. And, um, it was just super frustrating and, oh my gosh, it was just so frustrating. And, and I'm starting to learn how important these concepts are too. Cause I'm studying this thing. And I'm trying to figure it out. And like, I've been learning, like Stanford came out with a study in the last year and a half. It says that people determine the credibility of your website in less than half of a second and over 90% of what they are judging is your design. And I was so grateful for this and validated this like internal thing. I was like, that's what I'm saying. And, um, and so it was like, it doesn't matter if you have the most incredible offer in the world, the most incredible product in the world, like you might be the world's best guru, but if your design sucks, you literally will not be able to get somebody to stay on your page long enough to see what you're even selling. So you lose the game, like you lose the game. And that's when I was like, I have to figure this out. And so, um, what, what ended up happening is I, uh, I just, I got crazy obsessed with figuring this out. And so, um, I ended up connecting with somebody who was really competent in the funnel space and kind of on a one-off, he was like, do you want to see something I'm building for my client? I was like, yeah. And, um, and he was like, I don't know why, but she just like asked me to recreate like as perfectly as possible, like this design inside a click funnel. He's like, look how, look how close I got. And all of a sudden, like this thing clicked for me. Yes, exactly. And I just had this huge epiphany where I was like, I don't need to learn how to code. I don't need Photoshop. I don't need graphic design skills. Like all I have to do is learn how to leverage other people's designs and turn them into my own. And thus was born this concept that I call design hacking and design hacking. Like if we're going to urban dictionary it, like design hacking is swiping the design ideas, of smarter, richer, and more successful businesses than ours to model in our own. And, and I think that word model is really essential. And I don't think that this concept is foreign to people, right? I think everybody's heard like model what works, right? Like find the result that you want and like mimic them, but we still get stuck all the time. And that's where I was. And, and so I start to understand like, okay, I need to model stuff. So I'm building funnels where I'm like, well, they're kind of using blue. So I'll use blue and their layout's kind of like this. So I don't know. I'll kind of do it like this. And not only am I not getting the aesthetic that I want, but I'm still not winning the game in terms of conversions. And like granted both have improved a little bit, but I'm just like, this ain't it. Like this isn't it. And so because I'm like a systems freak, like I just, I can't help myself. 
all of a sudden, and I don't know what the catalyst for this is. I just like, thank God every day. But all of a sudden I like had this thought one day where I was like, what if design is not an art? Like, what if this concept of design is actually a science? It's not this like nebulous, you know, ambiguous thing where it's like, you either got it or you don't. What if design is this scientific thing where it's just a series of steps to take, a series of decisions to make, and a series of tools to use? Like, what if it is that? And so I started to approach this concept of high converting design in terms of that. And what I did is I started to pull up all these web pages that were that I knew were converting. And I started to see like, what patterns am I seeing in their structure or their words or images, their paint colors, like in terms of the energy, like what's going on on the page or spacing, like what am I seeing? And it was fascinating for me. I thought I was going to come to this like 50 page, you know, thesis conclusion. And I ended up coming up with six things. There's literally six things that you have to know in order to design a high converting web page. Like I call it the six step science of design hacking. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, like if we can find uh, the pages that we know are converting in our niche with our customer base and in terms of getting them to do what we want them to do, which is either like buy a $7 tripwire or like a $25,000 coaching program. Like, so again, niche, customer base, what we want them to do. If we can find the people that are converting there, then there's literally six things that we just have to pay attention to in order to know how do we pick and understand what elements of that page are converting, like what's actually working so we can model it over into our own. And what's really fascinating about these six steps, like when you, when you approach it in these six different steps, like not only do you are able to strip over the converting elements, but you're able to bypass coding and Photoshop and graphic design skills, like the way that you do it. And anyway, it just like blew, just blew my mind. So I started to get, I started to implement this, got amazing results for my clients. Then people are starting to be like, wait, how are you doing this? And so I started to teach them just one off and literally like due to popular demand, like people are like, please make a course, like, please show us how to do this. And so I just, I made a course and I called it CF design school. I teach the six step science of design hacking to show people how to design as, uh, just like extraordinarily, like aesthetically extraordinary funnels, um, that convert. And I think that is like the most important part. You'll see, there's a lot of people that teach design especially design funnels, um, but they missed the mark. I love them to death, but they missed the mark because what I think is really important to understand is that good design equals conversions. Good design equals money. Good design does not equal pretty. And so because of that, you have, if you're, if that is what you're going for, if you approach design as a marketer rather than a designer, there has to be a completely different approach to how you do things. And, um, and that's how, and that's how you win the game. And, and again, I think there are brilliant, amazing designers who create pretty, pretty stuff all the time. But if you were to go through these six steps and figure out like, okay, what on this page is converting and what's not, you'd be like, Hmm, they're leaving a lot of money on the table. And Anyway, I think that's just what makes me so excited about this concept of design hacking and like CF Design School is that it is so much more than learning how to build pretty things. So much more than that. It is about this learning the skill set to take a message or an idea to the world. And um, yeah, it's just been amazing to see not only the results, again, for myself personally, but I mean, we've put thousands of people through the training and have hundreds of people um, in terms of success stories. And it's just... Um, it's awesome. It's amazing. So. That's so cool. No, and what I love is, okay, so I went to school and I was like, I loved being artsy. I wanted to go to film school too, but I was like, nice. I don't want to live that family life. That's yes. not a good family life. So I said, no, I can't, I'm not going to do that personally. That's not for my family. So I'm like, yeah. okay, fine. Well, I would love to do marketing, but really everyone's just paying me to be a, I just pay, I have patrons who let me be creative. And I'm like, that's not how I want to, I want to make something that helps people. And so yes. I, I yes. dumbed myself down to an analyst. I was like, <laughs> I love doing the creative. I love being able to make something that connects with people. But if I need to make this work, I need to be an analyst. So I can prove mm. we make this change. It does this. It will do this. Yeah. Right. Little did I. So, and for me, like once I got into the online space, and I started doing that. Little did I know that is the de definition of direct marketing and direct online mm -hmm. marketing. And it is mm -hmm. how it all works. And so they were, we were in school and they said, all right, so how much on, on this idea business that you're going to do, blah, 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 blah. How much are you going to spend on your billboards? And I'm like, I don't know. What's the return on the investment for a billboard? He goes, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't matter? <laughs> like, that's the only thing that matters. It yes. matters. 
And so like everybody's going to teach you how to make something pretty or do this. This is where it comes down to. Let's make money. And when you are, when you're in this and you're passionate about funnels, you're not just passionate about your own ideas. It's not about making money, right? Right. It's about right. helping other people do the exact same thing because when their message explodes, there's just more beauty everywhere and more mm-hmm. giving and more joy. And it, it just works. And when you can help yes. people get those results, game over. Like this is, this is where you want to belong. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. It's awesome. Oh, I totally went off on that. You, you get it though. Like you, you get it. That, that, that is like the beauty of internet marketing. Like all the time people are like, well, I don't know if I want to be an agency. Like, I don't know if I want to design funnels, but like, where do I get started? I'm always like, join CF Design School. You will learn this skill. Like it's a skill set that helps you take an idea or message to the world, whether it's a product, whether that's a movement. And, and I really believe that internet marketing will change the world because it is the means by which you can spread information. And so like that's, I, and again, I think that's why I'm like so strategically loud like all the time about design hacking is because I know the effect that this can have if we're able to get into the hands of good people, this skill set to take things to the world. If you look at the original Funnel Hacks webinar, like Russell literally says, this is a tool that you can use. It has great power. You're going to use it ethically though. We have an opportunity to use it ethically. There may be a time, like there are brands catching on to this stuff. Yeah. There's going to be a time when it's not ethical. You, we, it is time for us to come in here and just plant the flag and make it a good place to be and define the marketplace. Yeah, sorry. yeah. Change the world. So I love Amen. That. Amen, brother. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I've got so many things. You talked about like the things that you need to know in order to be able to actually start doing those six. You listed mm-hmm. three. I went over to .com Secrets just to kind of see. They list. Yes. On page 101, they list uh, the five demographics, offer, landing page, traffic source an ad copy, just no, no three of those. So three and three, I hear that. Um, my question is this, like, did it take a two comma club award for you to feel like you had something to give in a course? At what point did you feel like mm. you earned the ability to give a course to somebody to help them? When did you feel like you'd earned that right? Because everyone's like, I want to make a million dollars. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. are you going to change people's lives? You know, I, I've heard this idea communicated by a bunch of different people, but, um, just the idea kind of around this, this perspective shift around sales, that if you have something that works, you have a moral responsibility to give it to the world. Like that's the game. And if not, like you're just selfish, (laughs) like it's just how it is. And so, um, you're selfish or you're lazy or all these different things. And so for me, like, I literally, I mean, I started implementing it for myself, started working. I started implementing it for clients and I started working. And I think that I was really blessed at this point to have built an agency because um, it, I was already interacting with clients. And so they would see my stuff and they would ask me. And so then again, they would just pay me 500 to a thousand bucks an hour at that point to teach them. And, um, and they were just like, like this is amazing and so I think um kind of combined with like that moral responsibility and again I think I was really um in terms of the sequence of things like it was a really divine blessing the timeline of all this that I had I I had been able to teach I'd able to work know it worked for myself I knew it worked for clients and like in teaching the concept it was also communicated well and so um and then after that I had many people ask me like can you like can you package this up and so Um, again, that all came as the result of an agency model. And I don't necessarily know if that's like the thing, like I was, I was blessed to have a lot of validation before I like people paid for this idea of design hacking before I ever launched this course. But I don't necessarily think that that is necessary. I think honestly, it's like, if you're sitting on something that can improve the world that will serve as a betterment for the world, I think like, that's it. Like you have a more responsibility to sell. And like, you also have a moral responsibility to learn how to sell it. Like that's one of the things I love about the click funnel story. Like this thing did not sell for a while. They had to learn how to sell this product. Right. Or like same with like orange juice or toothpaste, like these things that bettered the world. Like they just didn't know how to sell them. And it wasn't until they had like the marketing stamina to figure out like how to do this thing. But 
Um, yeah. And I think that's definitely been a process for me as well. I get better and better at knowing how to communicate these ideas and sell them over and over again. I think that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about um, like communicating via video is like, I'm always practicing how will, how can I communicate these ideas that I'm trying to promote into the world? What will resonate with people? And even though I'm talking about the same, like if you go look at my YouTube channel, like I'm basically talking about the same thing in every single video, just in different ways and trying to see like, what will resonate with people? How does this work? But I really do think that's the parameter. Like if you have something that you know will change the world in a way that is, that is better, you have a more responsibility to figure out how to sell it. I think that's it for me. When I got started in this whole thing, like as a kid, I was never going to be a salesman. That was the mm-hmm. last thing I was going to do. I had been told stories about my grandfather who was a salesman and how he went door to door selling vacuums and he was never home. Mm-hmm. And I had my father who works dead hard, but always yeah. said the number one thing I wish I could always do is spend more time. So I'm like, hmm, spend time at home. Got it. Salesman, not a good idea. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just got rid of the idea when in truth, All good salesman is, all a good salesman, saleswoman is, is the ability to be able to state, this can change your life. And I believe this, like, this is not this. And it's not the whole, buy one, get two, get two, two, two." you're not, you're not doing a bunch of closing. That's not the goal. Closing is helping them finish the decision that they've already made. Yeah. And I, I think something for me too, that's been really beneficial, um, is, is just this mindset that you don't have to know everything to help somebody. Mm-hmm. Like you just, you don't have to know everything. You can teach them what you know. And as you get smarter, you help them get smarter and understanding that you can like, and it's expected that you grow as they grow. So I think if you wait until you're at the top before you start helping people, it's again, you, you failed on your moral responsibility. I think your responsibility is to help when you're just maybe a few steps ahead and then walk them up the path. Um, And, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, uh, I think a lot of people and a lot of amazing ideas are not being communicated because of a maybe lack of sense of self or this like moral responsibility. But I tell my coaching, like I tell my students all the time, like do it, build it, make it happen and you'll figure it out. And it might, it might bomb. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know how many, maybe you haven't had any, I've had a ton of things that have bombed and I'm so grateful for them because they've helped tweak and refine how I do things. But, um, but yeah, no, I think they're, and not only is there more responsibility, but I love the story about your grandfather and your dad. Like, I think there, there also is, we are so blessed to live in a day and age where there's an intelligent way to go about that in a way that allows you to still be the master and owner of your time. And it, and it lets you be you. Yes. Which yes. is also nice. You don't have to feel like you have to be somebody else. Just be you louder in a way that helps people. And yep. when you start to change lives, yes. more people start to come. It's not like if you build it, they will come. You have to speak, but it works. It yes. You have yes. To learn. Over and over and over again. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think that's another thing as well. Like, I think if you're looking to build real legacy, I was just talking about this with my branding team yesterday. Um, But I think if you're looking to build like a real legacy, I think there are a lot of different ways you can go about online business, right? Like you can sell trinkets, you could stay behind the curtain. And, and I don't necessarily know if there's anything wrong about that, but you're just playing a completely different game. But I think if you're looking to play the game of legacy and impact and significant change, then you have to be willing to be the face in the forefront of what you're doing. And that is going to require that you are seen. And I know for me, especially like, honestly, I had this like come to Jesus moment about a year and a half ago where I was kind of like, you know, trying to decide how much in the poor, how much in the world I was going to be, how much uh, face showing I was going to do. And I didn't realize how, how much anxiety I had around that. In fact, um, about a year and a half ago, I hired my coach who I've been working with since she's amazing. Her name's Katie Richardson. And I hired her and not only was I really stressed cause I was like the most money I had ever paid for anything in my life up to that point. It was like a $30,000 a year thing. And I just, I just never, I just never at that point a year and a half ago, I had never paid that much. Um, and, uh, Anyway, it, and it's kind of awesome to look back now. I'm like, oh, 30 what? Like, it's, you know, it's just like, that's what, that's what, all, that's what everybody pays. Right. But I was just like, oh my gosh, like, that's insane. And I, and I also knew, like, when I put down that amount of money, like, I knew that I had to play the game for real. 
which meant that I had to be seen. And, and it was interesting to see, like, I literally went into the hospital with an ulcer. I was so stressed. Like I literally, like a day later, all of a sudden I was like, I think I'm dying. And I went to the hospital and they're like, uh, you have an ulcer. Have you been like unusually stressed lady? I like lied through, lied through my teeth. I was like, no. And I'm like, inside, I'm like, yes, I'm dying. <laughs> and, um, but it was, it was this a ginormous fear of being seen and what would people think of me? And what, how would I make people uncomfortable if I was unsuccessful? How would I make people feel uncomfortable if I was successful? Like both of those things were weirdly, like really hard for me. And, um, and honestly, like the thing that has been the greatest catalyst for my success, like tactic wise design hacking without a doubt, like it, down on the ground applications tactics, but in terms of like upper level principles, like the thing that has helped me to be the most successful and you can see it in my Stripe account, like you watch when my Stripe account goes up and I can tell you at each of those moments when those things go up is because I got clear on who I was and I got fine with letting the world know about it and being seen and again, like living up to this, you know, quote unquote, moral responsibility to share what it, what it was that I, that I was sitting on. And, um, but no, I think, uh, I don't know. I think a lot of people can get really discouraged because it's like, they just keep trying to do it. Nothing works. And again, like, um, yeah, it's just been amazing to me to recognize how, the success of my funnel building business of my design hacking business has literally hinged on my clarity in regards to who I am and my fortitude to choose to be that person over and over again. And um, yeah, I really think that if I just don't think there's a lot of people who are the truest versions of themselves, Ryan holiday. Do you know Ryan holiday? I know of him. I've heard of the name. He, yeah, he's amazing. He's written like, um, trust me, I'm lying and all these different books. He just came out with this book on stillness. But one of my favorite books about him from him is a book called ego is the enemy. And he, and one of my favorite quotes from there, I usually have it hanging up on my wall is it's like, um, he's like, anybody can win. He's like, losers can win. He's like, people can get lucky and win. He's like, a holes can win. Like anybody can win. And he goes, but they're playing the wrong game. Because the people that truly win are the people who are the truest versions of themselves. Huh. And, um, and he's like, there's not a lot of people who do that. And, and again, it's just fascinating for me to see the people that I admire most in business and in life are those who have done the work to understand who they are and to choose it over and over again. And, um, and yeah, I just think it's just amazing. So yeah, if like anybody's sitting on an idea, own it. Like it's time to go. It's time to play. And uh, yeah, if you get an ulcer, just ping me. We can bond about that. <laughs> yeah, we can bond over it. Yeah. It, this is not an easy game. There, I mean, everything sold is easy because you can learn. You can do this. Mm -hmm. This is not something that you cannot do. You can yes. learn this. And so we try yes. to lift your dreams. We try to, yes, you can, but this is hard. And being an entrepreneur is hard and dealing with all these things are hard. You will be tested and it will be the question of, am I okay being me louder? Am I okay letting people know this about me? Am I okay earning a lot of money? Am I in here? A lot of people are like, oh, yeah. get money. No, I'll tell you what, it's, there can be stresses in your life that you don't even recognize once you start to get to that point. And it, this becomes the game of, you are, it's a game with yourself and you're constantly trying yes. to compete. And when you actually have those personal wins, you see the other wins start to grow at the same time outside, but it all starts inside. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, it's just amazing. Like, um, like if we look at my course, CF design school, mm -hmm. like literally the whole thing is designed to help you to make up the cost of the course by the weekend. And people do it all the time, but some people don't do it. And it's fascinating. So I'll do research, right? My team will do research. And it's just like, like you have the steps, like they're here for you. Like, why aren't you doing them? And their answer is like, I know it will work, but I'm afraid. Like, I just, I can't get myself to take the step. And so it's been interesting, like to see how we've developed the course to it's, it's become partially mindset as well, because it's like, I know, I know if you do the things that I tell you to do, you will be successful. Like, I know that, but it's just fascinating to see how the catalyst for success. Like, I think it's a combination of having the right um, mentors and tactics for sure. You have to, I mean, you can't be stupid, right? But then having the fortitude to actually implement them and the clarity about yourself to actually implement them. And I think it's twofold. And I think one without the other, 
it just, it's not, it's not the recipe for success. And um, yeah, I think that's why I've been really grateful for this experience, especially with um, CF Design School and this concept of design hacking is um, we've kind of been able to marry the two in sense of like, here's some tactics that really work. And then like in terms of our community, we do stuff all the time to keep people engaged and going and staying in the right frame of mind. And we have like, it's called CF Design School. We have graduations that they can work toward. We have group coaching calls. We have master trainers, like, like all the time, like we're going live in there. They're going live in there. And it's become this really cool family community. And again, I think like the marriage between like mindset and community along with tactics has really been one of the greatest catalysts for people succeeding in kind of the design hacking field. Catherine, where do people go to learn about you? If they're looking for a build, if they're looking for CF Design School, where do they go? Honestly, if you just go to cfdesignschool.com, um, you'll be able to kind of check it out there. And that's where you can kind of figure out what the program is all about and kind of what that looks like. Now, um, if you're looking for anything else besides that, the easiest way, honestly, just follow me on Instagram. It just at Miss Catherine Jones, M S K A T H R I N J O N E S. Um, and you can get a hold of me. And if it's something that we can do in terms of agency build, or I mean, we do like high end automation training, whatever else you need, I'll get you in touch with my team and we'll make it happen for you. So either cfdesignschool.com um, or follow me on Instagram at Miss Catherine Jones. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Dang, was that cool or was that cool, guys? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, but I actually do something very, very special. After the interview is done, I actually record two more questions. Those two questions spark a whole new conversation, and I record those, and I'm happy to give you access to that. All you have to do is go to hackthatfunnelradio.com. When you enter your email address there, I will automatically give you access to every single interview's two extra questions and the conversation that sparks off of that. Go to hackthatfunnelradio.com to get your access now.